Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, scholars and dignitaries, welcome to another episode. Welcome to my world. Hello, friends. So this is the next segment in the series of the apparitions of the Blessed Virgin Mary on Earth. This is the greatest miracle one can possibly imagine. Mary, the Blessed Mother of Jesus, has visited us over 2,500 times in over 100 countries throughout the world. And she's also given many miracles along the way to help convince us that heaven and hell are real and that someday we'll end up going to one of those two places. She tells us how to follow the path to heaven and also gives us hints on what might happen if we refuse to convert and repent and refuse to return to God. So here is another in the set of apparitions. This isn't a long video, but please, please listen to it very carefully. These are messages from heaven. They're for the entire world, but that means they have to first start with you and me. Here's another miracle that can be attested to by hundreds, if not thousands, who were present at the time. Back in the mid-80s, the president of the Philippines was Ferdinand Marcos. He was a dictator and certainly wasn't a popular leader. Anyway, the people rose up against his tyrannic rule and took to the streets of Manila. Well, Marcos sent his army out to quell the rebellion. The insurrection also included thousands of religious priests and nuns, and Catholics who took flowers and images of our Blessed Mother of Jesus, and they fell to their knees and they prayed the rosary in the streets. That's the type of a rebellion this was. No guns, just rosaries and prayer. So President Merkels sent his full army with tanks and armored vehicles into the streets to control and stop the crowds. He was willing to use his military to massacre the civilians, even to shoot them down to stop the protests and keep his power. But as the soldiers started to advance, they looked up into the sky and they saw a cross-like figure, but they continued to advance. And the people continued to pray the rosary and to sing the Ave Maria after each decade. All of a sudden, the soldiers became awestruck and stopped in their tracks. According to many of the soldiers, quote, a beautiful woman dressed in blue with heavenly eyes appeared in front of them, encased in a bright light. She extended her arms outward and spoke in a heavenly voice that was clearly heard by everyone, and the crowd saw her too. And then she stood before the tanks. She said, quote, Dear soldiers, stop. Do not proceed. Do not harm my children. I am queen of this land. The soldiers immediately dropped their weapons, withdrew back, and then actually joined with the people to resist and fight with them against the Marcos regime. The soldiers claimed that this was the Virgin Mary, and the television cameras covering the event prompted many thousands more to come out of their homes in celebration, yelling, Mother Mary is with us. The soldiers conceded. No shots were fired, and that day, President Marcos and his family abandoned the presidency and fled that very night. The Roman Catholic Cardinal of the Philippines, Cardinal Jaime Sin, vouched for the truth of the apparition. He also told of how the soldiers later came to him in tears, awestruck by this heavenly woman. And the cardinal told him one other thing. He said that later he had met with Sister Lucia, the last living visionary from Fatima. And while Sister Lucia had no access to newspapers or television or the radio, she knew and recounted every one of the details of what had happened in the Philippines directly to the cardinal. She then said that Corazon Aquino, who actually won the presidency against Marcos, was a gift to the Philippines, and that through her leadership, actually China would begin the process of becoming a Christian nation. And there remains a statue and a shrine today to honor that miracle in Manila in the Philippines. So then, the question is, how do we unpack all of this? Are there major themes we can find from the 2,500 apparitions across the world? Well, there are three things to remember. First and foremost, we have to realize why this phenomenon is happening. And in one message, Jesus himself said that he sends his mother to warn men so that many souls will be saved that otherwise would be lost. Second, we have to understand the seriousness of this. Again, the messages say time and again, if man does not repent during this time of mercy, 
there will come a time of justice. And third, we need to realize that there have been many, many messages that have been given to us in a series of supernatural phenomena, and these messages are very grave, very serious, and can have catastrophic consequences, and yet they're never mentioned in any of the mainstream media. So in a nutshell, we need to believe. And there are many, many forces, even within the church itself, that simply do not believe and that cover it up. And some say that there are still some outstanding secrets, like that third secret of Fatima that the Vatican has never revealed, secrets that are too shocking for the world. So belief is key. And then we need action. We need to listen to her, to what she recommends, period, to save our families, to save humanity from both catastrophes and especially the fires of eternal damnation, of torture, of hell. We need to act. She said that although the greatest number of souls go to purgatory and then eventually heaven, few souls go directly to heaven. And she said that souls are falling into hell like snowflakes. And here are her messages in a succinct form. Return to her son. Do as he says. Actively reject Satan and choose for God, not passively, but actively each and every day. Avoid sin. Avoid the temptation of sin. Return to the sacraments and the two greatest weapons against Satan. Pray the Holy Rosary and go to Holy Mass and Eucharistic Adoration. Pray for the conversion of sinners. Pray for world peace. Pray for the poor souls in purgatory. In many of the apparitions, she reveals the sins that God hates. Of course, killing, murder, violence, including abortion, even gossip. Sins of the flesh, the most common sins. Impurity, immodesty, pride. Not respecting the Sabbath, working on the seventh day, which is reserved to God. Using the Lord's name in vain, swearing or cursing or in blasphemy. Unforgiveness of others. Turning away from God, mocking religion, even practicing your Christianity in a lukewarm manner. I just want to say that through these apparitions, the Blessed Mother has brought more people to her son than all the popes and bishops of the world, and that's a good thing. Sister Lucia said that we can still restrain heaven's chastisement as we have two means at our disposal that are very effective, prayer and sacrifice. She said that for sacrifice, we must renounce pleasures and give ourselves to God, and renouncing pleasure is something that we just don't do today. And she specifically said that, quote, there is no material or spiritual, national or international problem that cannot be resolved with the Holy Rosary and our sacrifices. And if recited with love and devotion, it will console Mary, wiping away so many tears from her immaculate heart. If we despise and reject this last means, heaven will no longer pardon us because we will have committed a sin that the gospel calls a sin against the Holy Spirit. This sin consists in openly rejecting with full knowledge and will the salvation that is put into our hands. Hey, be safe, be well, and may God bless.